I was just watching Thomas Sheridan's latest video of today and he talks about a game show that used to be on ITV called Bullseye. <sighs> there was a worse show than Bullseye. Anybody who remembers British television in the 80s, this will resonate with you as soon as I tell you the, the one game show that was worse than Bullseye. Here we go. 3 to 1. 3 to 1 was the television equivalent of opening and unleashing a septic tank. 3 to 1 was simply appalling. Uh, Bullseye was made in its heyday by Central Television, but it started, as all of these things did, with ATV. ATV very nearly lost the franchise in 1981 because the, the programming that came out was so diabolical. ATV brought us crossroads, just to put that into proper context. So... You know, when Central took over the franchise from ATV, it, it, they didn't lose their franchise, but they were required to restructure the company. They were required to rebrand as Central rather than ATV. And the status of the new company was quite differently structured from ATV. So Central, and it must be said, produced programs of a much higher quality than ATV. But Bullseye got started with ATV. And... Um, one of the reasons why they didn't give out any significant cash prizes was because the IBA, who regulated both ITV and Channel 4, insisted that there was a cap on significant cash prizes. This is why the first game show on British television that had any significant cash prizes was Who Wants to Be a Billionaire? They had, by this stage, lifted the regulation on significant cash prizes. So, um, yeah, Bullseye was diabolical. It really, you know, it really was burlesquing people, Bulls I was. But so was, so was 321. 321 was just, oh no, I remember people, you know, Vox Pops and Talking Heads talking about diabolical television from the 1980s. And I did, they, I so agree. You would turn on the telly and there'd be snooker on one channel and there'd be opera on BBC Two or there'd be, you know, Little and Large would be on BBC One. And then you turn on Ulster Television and they'd, oh no, it's 321. Switch the telly off. No. Um, but this is a Thomas, you know, and he has such a different approach to these things from myself. That's why I always love listening to him. He thinks quite differently from me, but it's such a good comparison to what's happening today. Bullseye, you could win a speedboat. Who knows? You might live in a corporation estate in Wolverhampton and you'd be the first person in the estate to win a speedboat. Or Birmingham that has no rivers. You know, and it was, it was some central television, so that was their catchment, it was, you know, Wolverhampton and Stoke and Birmingham and Nottingham, places like that. That, you know, if it wasn't for the, the natural rain over England, they'd be deserts, because they have very, very few natural water courses in that part of England. So, yeah, that's absolutely the place to win a speedboat. Hmm. They'd been better off winning an electric kettle. That's the truth. They, or, you know, a food mixer or something. A microwave, a microwave oven, and though or a VHS video, because in the the you know in the mid eighties, the VHS video was still a big status symbol. Not everybody could afford to buy a video. People rented them, or people shared them with their neighbours and friends. Yeah, they could have given you a bit. No, they give you a speedboat. You know, you go on a show like that. You're, <laughs> yeah, you know, you deserve everything you get. This is why now I'm looking today at Ireland's call. Ireland's call was unleashed upon us last year. And this was a call to nurses and medical staff all over the world, including Ireland, but Australia and all over. Come home to Ireland and take on the coronavirus with us. And very many of them did. They came home to Ireland and they discovered that this was all a hoax. Yes, that's what it was. They won't put in those words. Artigy won't even mention it. But it was a hoax, Ireland's call. So these people came home from their jobs and livelihoods in other countries and then they discover that because they're not registered to work here, they're not even eligible for the PUP, which is a loan anyway. And they're not even eligible for the dole, which isn't a loan, but it's €203 Euros a week. I want to say from the bottom of my heart to all of those people that I have no sympathy for you. Right? I have no sympathy for you whatsoever because by 2020, around the general election in Ireland of 20, February 2020, you should have known what this was about. If any of you had done your homework, you should have known what this is about. Be in the system, but not of the system. Well, those are people who are of the system and they have won a speedboat. 
So I'm looking now at these ones and they ultimately they employing them to was found for about 50 people. And a lot more came back to Ireland and now don't know what to do. They're with families, they're with friends, they're couch surfing, they're doing all this kind of thing. And here's another thing. They could sue the state for loss of income, inconvenience, breach of or at least breach of an implicit contract. You could make a very sound argument for breach of contract. So all they have to do is sue the state in the High Court. It's as easy as that. But I won't hold my breath on that one. So you must understand what these predators, particularly Veradker, RTE, Martin, all of these ones, they know who they're picking on. They know who they're picking on, right? They know the likelihood of those people who they burlesqued into coming back to Ireland and giving up their livelihoods and giving up their incomes they knew the likelihood of it actually bouncing back on them and having any consequences for it. The likelihood was marginally, fractionally above zero. Um, at the meantime, then you have Varadkar going around in a coat and Simon Harris putting on the big, you know, the big specs. He put on the big specs and he was investigating or looking at some kind of facility. It's like Kim Jong-il. Or Kim Jong Un, Kim Jong Un looking at things, Simon Harris looking at things, you know, on the big specs. And Harris looked even goofier with these big goggles on him. Him and Varadkar in coats, investigating or looking at some place somewhere. You know, they're the ones who will be getting. You know, this was done. The Ireland's call thing done was done as a photo call. It was spin. It was absolutely as depraved as oh Leo's alert, she's put on a coat, he's going to kick the ass of coronavirus, yeah that thing where Varadkar put on a coat and said he was going to return to work as a doctor it was every bit as grotesque and every bit as false and every bit as unfounded as that those people who fell for it fell for it, answer never give a sucker an even break you got what you deserved I say it so sincerely I have no sympathy for you because those people who answered Ireland's call, they are part, that you can bet your life that they are part of that whole state cult. That whole cult that exists of worshipping the state. The government will make it okay for us. Do what RTE tells you. Read the Irish Times. Listen to them. Take all the advice that they give you. The government knows best. So this is why, very seriously, and having considered it in depth, I have no sympathy for those people who are tricked into coming back here to do Ireland's call. Yeah, that was great for you, wasn't it? Suckers. Idiots. Sucker dummies. Because Leo put on a coat and he said, we all have to come back and kick the arse of coronavirus. Oh yeah, well, I have no sympathy. I have no sympathy. Um... Polls. Thomas is talking about polls. Who gets polled? Who you know? Who who? Apparently, the Irish are happier than ever. Well, I just imagine that people who are wealthy and who are retired and who aren't running a small business haven't got liabilities, overhead staff, that kind of thing. They're, I'm sure, they're thrilled. I'm sure you know Ray and Mora. Unless Ray and Mora have children, then they've a problem. But, you know, assuming that they have no liabilities and debts and mortgages and car loans, that kind of thing, kids that have to go to these expensive, useless private schools, then, you know, they're just sitting pretty. You know, where are the polls conducted? Because I've never been polled and I don't know anyone who has been polled. But I can tell you that the polls are completely genuine. They are completely genuine because they always poll the vegan corner of the Montrose canteen. That's who gets polled. The vegan corner of the RTG canteen. They get polled. They get polled all the time. So, so long as they are continuing to poll the vegan corner of the RTG canteen, then Fine Gael and Varadkar will get everything they want. Michal Martin is a sucker as well. I think he is a psychopath and I think he's a narcissist because he was not willing to let go of the notion of being the only leader of Fianna Fáil not to become Taoiseach. That was his accolade's heel and that's going to turn out nastily for him. I can assure you of that one. He's not going to be a winner in that one. But don't forget, what did we say? You know, like, we're dealing with psychopaths here. And they don't think in the long term. They don't even think in the medium term. So they've now got everybody locked down and they don't know what to do. And this is the truth. They really don't know what to do. That's psychopaths. They put on the bluster. They put on the spin. But they actually don't know what to do. So um, we're now going to be locked down until September. They've said, May. no, it'll be September. Don't worry. At least it'll probably be to the end of the year. 
I was discussing it with somebody yesterday and I said 10 years from now there'll still be people going around wearing masks. Yeah, there will still be people going around wearing masks 10 years from now. Trust me on that one. There'll be one or two, you know, there'll be the odd, like the, you know, the, the Japanese kamikaze pilot who hid out in the forest until 1981, that kind of thing. They'll all, you know, they, 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 you, you, they're not worth it. They're, they're, they don't let them into your headspace. Don't let them into your headspace. I haven't worn a mask once, apart from when I was doing stupid videos. I put on a leather mask. Nearly asphyxiated myself with the thing. Maybe that's what they're designed for. They're designed for S&M. I mean, we're dealing with the issue of S&M here. Don't talk to me about S&M. You know, but... <clears throat> I, I haven't worn a mask once. And, you know, again, you know, the cheese brains are saying, Oh, you're not, you're not going to stand for this. You're, you're locked down until May. Oh, no. Oh, no, we're not going to be able to go to Ranala to get, a, you know, a nice Prosecco or a Chianti. Don't worry about Ranelagh, it's all closed down. It's like the Stevens Green Centre, they're all closed down as well. They're not going to be reopening, all right? They're not going to be reopening. All those little shops you used to go to, the little knick-knack shops you'd go to in Malahide, or Clontarf, or Ranelagh, where you'd buy overpriced rubbish to get as presents to give to some woman on her 40th birthday that she doesn't want anyway. They all throw them in the attic or into a skip. Oh, look, Karen. Orla brought you a lovely present. Look. You know, I'll, 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 I'll get, listen, it's so thoughtful. It's so thoughtful. I really wanted a fur-lined Prosecco holder. Thank you. Musical revolving fur-lined Prosecco holder. I, you know, I just wasn't complete till I got that. That just made my 40th birthday for me. Yeah. Uh, we have some vegan cheese here and crackers from Darina Allen. Darina Allen's vegan cheese and crackers. If they're vegan, I can only guess where Darina Allen got the contents from. But anyway. Anyway. But, you know, there is a cult. It's a cult of loving government. They love government. I was talking to a woman up in Hoth, and, you know, she said, well, I said to her, both my parents and I, got, I love telling people, both my parents and I got tested negative. Oh, yeah, well, then they, surely they'd be, they're 90, 91. Well, then, then surely they'll be at the top of the queue for the vaccine. No, I said, after you after you listen let's talk about the vaccine you know that's another one of their but it's ireland's call version two the vaccine don't worry about the vaccine they're all saying you know you'll get your freedoms back if you get the vaccine don't worry they're still going to be in lockdown till at least september although i imagine probably next christmas so you know you're not going to get your freedoms back if you take the vaccine it's okay it's like many other things that I've witnessed. I've witnessed this very carefully, and I've witnessed it in court. I've said to you before, it's what the Godfather said, the secret unknowns. I can assure you that you don't know who's calling the shots in this country. It's not Veradgar, he's just a clown. It's not Hall Martin, it's not even the clowns in RTE. They are just clowns, they're just puppets. That sounds very D. Wall tinfoil hat, but it's actually the truth. Where you want to see what's going on, go to the High Court. Because the High Court is the playground primarily of the rich and powerful. And they will never, never, never compromise the High Court. That will never be got rid of. They won't abolish the High Court. When they brought in the lockdown at its most vicious in April of last year, I noticed something in the regulations. Habeas corpus applications were not abolished. If habeas corpus applications had been abolished, that's the, start, that's the dictatorship. So as long as you can make a habeas corpus application in the High Court, then, you know, we haven't actually fully established a police state. But they're not telling you this. They will never, never make you, you know, you'll never be invited to that particular party. You'll never be on that guest list. So, you know, don't worry. There's not going, this thing of mandatory vaccines, or they'll give you back your freedoms if you get the vaccine. Get the jab. Get the jab. Don't you get the jab? They use the word jab deliberately. I refuse to use the word jab because it's sanitizing what it actually is. It's an injection of a vaccine. So I use the word vaccine. Vaccine, vaccine. Did you get jabbed? Did you get jabbed, Margaret? Oh, yes, Patricia, I got jabbed. I got the jab. It was just a jab. No, no, it's a vaccine. Jab. Jab, don't give me that. You know? But... Um, the, you know, there has been this gaslighting. Though, I mean, the whole coronavirus is a gaslight, of course. Do you see all the people dropping dead in the street in Fairview Park or Stevens' Green? All those ones that were moaning corpses at the top of Grafton Street. 
Do you see them all dropping there? No. By the way, the NGOs, those people in the NGOs, I no, sorry, I shouldn't call them people. Those ones in the NGOs, they're clowns in this as well. They're clowns in this as well. I can tell you that. They don't have the intellect. No person with any integrity or intelligence could work in an NGO. And they all carry, you know, you ring an NGO, Barnardo's at these places, and they they act as if answering the phone is a big act of charity. These people are very highly paid. These people are very, very highly paid. I mean, you know, I'm just, oh, no, please, stop it. Stop it. Um, I said it before, after February of 2020, I decided that every, it was all, each of us were to ourselves, apart from mum and dad, I look after them, but everybody else can go and sort themselves out. Now, I like making the videos. I get a lot of support from the videos. A lot of people contact me. Thank you. Um, don't come to me looking for legal advice. I won't apply. But I might block him. There's a particular individual now who we're seeing making a holy show of himself out on tinfoil hatland of Ireland. You know, and he contacted me last year and I told him, now I'm blocking you. I'm keeping a screenshot of this. I'm going to pass it to the Gardaí. And if you as much as contact me or come near my home again, you're in, you're in deep water. So, you know, you don't knot them around. But having said that, people get in touch and they send me their stories and that kind of thing. And they're always welcome to do that. But don't expect to reply from me automatically. I'm not obliged to reply to you. I'm not monetized. I've closed comments. I've even closed likes on this video. And the reason why I do that is because, as I said, I'm not monetized. I'm not making money from any of this. I don't owe anybody anything. It's like the litigation I bring in hope. I don't look for money to pay for that. And a lot of the cheese brains and Hoth and Sutton don't, don't, it just doesn't compute. First of all, it doesn't compute that you can actually go into the High Court and argue a case on your own, so long as you do the paperwork correctly and stick to the time limits and that kind of thing. But secondly, they just cannot comprehend that there's somebody out there who's not looking for their money. They t it it do just, do you know, it it's the bled thing that does not compute. It does not compute with them. I'm not looking for their money. Oh, what are you looking for? I'm looking for you to know the truth about what's going on here. But I read in the Irish Times and I thought I know to you this. Oh, well, okay, right. Uh, listen, you keep reading your Irish Times. You keep watching your RTE. You're grand. Then they contact me to know what's going on and hold. I don't reply. I don't reply. It's the same thing. I don't owe anybody anything. I'll put it on the. I'll turn. I'll flip it over. Flip it over. Let's say somebody was paying me money. Let's say somebody was financing litigation for me. They would hear from me about everything that's going on. Also, if somebody is helping me with other things through expertise or support or that kind of thing, then of course I stay in touch with them. You know, I'm loyal to my friends and I'm loyal to people who are supporters. But simply sending me an email or a message out of the blue does not mean that you're my friend and my supporter. You're welcome to contact me, so long as it's not abusive and threatening. You're not welcome to call to the house unsolicited. And I've had that as well. But if you send me a message via Twitter or Facebook or you send me an email, you know, you're welcome to do that. I don't mind that. But don't expect me to reply necessarily. I'm under no obligation to you. Anyway. Um, yeah, so... There you have these nurses and people who came back to Ireland with Ireland's call. Well, look, folks. Yeah. I don't sympathise. I'm sorry. You should have... You know, you're part of a cult. You are victims of a cult. And sometimes when people are victims of a cult, it has dire consequences for them. You cannot, and, and another cult is Freeman and the Land. And part of the cult of Freeman and the Land is that somehow, if you come out with the magic words in court, that you will not have any liability. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. You come out with all this crap in court, you know, it's not going to work for you. And part of the Freeman pathology is that they imagine that they do not have to actually deal with a summons for not wearing a mask or such like. You do. You have to deal with it. You have to show up in court. You'll be arrested. Then, from that point onwards, how you, how you choose to respond is another matter. Enter a not guilty plea and then put in a defence as such. You don't have to give evidence. But, you know, you can question the Garda who might have apprehended you or that kind of thing. But they don't... They haven't the intellect or the kind of energy or the intelligence to embrace that. You know? So instead, they go down the Freeman and the Land route. Well, it is a cult. 
Oh, there's a cult. There was only one game show on ITV, actually, that was of any particular merit. Believe it or not, it was Family Fortunes. That was presented by Bob Munkow, because that was another ATV show, which they bequeathed to Centre, then Les Dennis took it over. Bob Monkhouse was a man of integrity. He was a very, very funny stand-up comedian. He was an extremely good stand-up comedian. And I do not believe that... I mean, all of, all of Family Fortunes was all done kind of tongue-in-cheek. There was a real tongue-in-cheek quality to Family Fortunes, particularly under Bob Monkhouse. And he could just stand there and be genuinely hysterically funny, like Larry Grayson. Bob Monkhouse would not have taken on a burlesquing show. He was a man of a lot of integrity. He had been given a bad time by certain elements of the mainstream media. They made him out to be smarmy. He was a highly intelligent, articulate, decent man. People who worked with him said that he was courteous, he was helpful, he was very collegiate and supportive of those who worked with him. He worked very hard, he was civil, he was polite. But there's one thing about Bob Monkhouse in particular, the late Bob Monkhouse, and absolutely that has won me over to him totally and it was the fact that he totally and utterly detested Cilla Black 